Edo governor announces new minimum wage, raises salary from 40,000 naira to 70,000 naira. Senate begins investigative hearing on electricity tariff hike in 11 states. NNPCL blames logistic issues for fuel scarcity lingering in the country. And outside Nigeria tonight, Burkina Faso rejects Human Rights Watch's report on violent massacre in a village there. Kenya Airways stops flight to DR Congo capital. Now, tonight on Politics HQ. The wave of departures from the opposition People's Democratic Party is continuing this week. We're asking, is the former ruling party on a one-way ticket to destruction? Also tonight, the PDP won all 33 local government areas in Oyo State in the local government elections there. But the APC says the election was a sham. Now, was it really a sham? We'll try to find out tonight on Politics HQ. My name is Kofi Bartels. You're welcome. You're welcome. Last week, uh, Nigeria's opposition, People's Democratic Party, was hit with a series of resignation and defection, particularly in its Imo State chapter, where the former governor of Imo State and former deputy speaker of Nigeria's House of Representatives, Emeka Iherioha, tendered his resignation from the party of which he has been a member since 1998. That's a founding member of the party. Because it was founded, of course, in 1998. The area's resignation from the PDP and literally opened the floodgate of the departures from the opposition party, as in the 48 hours that followed, about 29 key members of the party in Imo State also left the party. Among them, the Imo State chairman of the PDP, the chairman himself, Charles Ugu. Uh, we also have the immediate past deputy governor of the state, General Irona. Now, today, more departures. This time, a 2023 presidential aspirant in the party, Dr. Cosmos Ndukwe, in his resignation letter, he even shared it on his Facebook page, he cited personal reasons, current commitments, and aspirations as reasons for uh, his uh, resignation. Um, today, in the last hour, breaking news, breaking news. The reports indicate that um, the former uh, a, a member, rather, of the Board of Trustees of the People's Democratic Party. He is a member of the Board of Trustees of the People's Democratic Party, uh, Charles Idahosa. Today, in the last hour, news has broken that he has announced his resignation from uh, the party. He resigned his party membership in Edo State um, in a letter dated April 29 um, to the chairman of his ward, Eho Ward 1, in Edo State. Um, he also copied his letter to various people. In the, this is a board of trustees member that you don't get it uh, bigger than that. Now, in the last 45 minutes or so, I've also read um, that a uh, former House of Representatives member, uh, Ozu Rigbo Ugona, has resigned his membership of the People's Democratic Party. Uh, he confirmed his exit from the main opposition party in a letter addressed to his ward chairman in Nwangeli, local government area, Umozo Ward in Nwangeli, local government area uh, of, um, the P, of Imo State. Now, he said in his resignation letter, and I quote, I've come to that decisive moment I had never wished, as I am constrained by circumstances defined by hard truths, incompatible differences with the PDP. So that's Imo State, we have Abia State, we have Edo State, and the beat goes on. Now, we've been talking about a Mecca here, you have. Since he resigned last week, what has he uh, been up to? Today, Emeka Heriha have paid an official visit to Alex Oti, who is the governor of, of uh, Abia State. Uh, Alex Oti is the only governor elected on the platform of the opposition Labour Party. And Heriha was so pleased with his visit that he shared pictures or photographs of that visit on his X or Twitter account. Now, in the midst of all of this, uh, Niger Delta leader Chief Edwin Clark, Edwin Piagodo Clark, uh, has written to the embattled acting national chairman of the PDP, Umar Damagun, asking him to sit up or resign, sit up or resign, in order to save the party uh, from destruction. Now, he's saying that, it's Edwin Clark, saying that last week's neck meeting shows that Damagun is working for and taking instructions from FCT minister and former River State Governor Yesung Wike. Apart from him, today, 
former governor of Benue State, Senator Gabriel Susuam, who's been shouting about um, subterranean forces in the PDP. Um, he had an interview uh, today, of course. He wants to be national chairman of the party. In his latest media interview, he says that, quote, there are moles and betrayers in the party, and they are planted to kill the party. That's what he said. Now, is the PDP sliding fast on the road to disintegration? How can the party save itself? We have uh, a guest tonight, Abdulaziz Olajide Adeniro. He's a, a Lagos Cuba candidate on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, it's probably known as Jando. Mr. Adeniro, good evening to you. It's good to see you, and thanks for joining us on the program tonight. Thank you for having me. Good evening. All right. Um, we, we even, as we're speaking, I don't know, we might even just flip our uh, internet on to see after this program that more people have resigned from your party. What is going on? <clears throat> well, um, undoubtedly, a uh, party is going through um, a phase. And, um, and I think that, um, I mean, it should worry anybody who is a lover of democracy. Uh, but I can say to you that um, all is not doom, uh, you know, gloom. Uh, there are uh, things that a lot of people are waiting for. Those who have resigned, especially in Imo State, you know, uh, politics is local. Um, what it is with them in that state might not be the same thing in another state. But I thought that everybody would have waited until we have our next meeting of the um, of, of August that is coming up because the last next meeting uh, came up with some resolution. One of which is to say, okay, we're talking about the vacant position of, of, of the chairman of the party, uh, which is actually zoned to the north central of, of the country for them to put their house together and present uh, a candidate for that office. Also, the NEC also came up with the issue of um, party discipline, which, which talked about setting up um, a committee to look at those who have done one or two wrongs, you know, uh, before and during the 2023 elections. And there are also a reconciliation committee. I thought that um, some of us would wait and explore uh, this, this party uh, internal mechanism and see if the concern of the party uh, will be invoked on those who have done wrong to the party before a decision can be taken. Uh, I'm not seeing what is happening currently. Of course, it's a challenge, but it's not the one that can't be surmounted. Uh, majority of those in PDP are veteran politicians. They've seen, they've seen it worse. I mean, even some of us that are baby politicians, we can say to you that uh, such a thing is not enough to scare us away to say, oh, we, we're going to run away. We will stay and see how things work out. But one thing is so certain. The party has a constitution. And the, the terms in this constitution are so clear. And there are processes upon which a decision can be taken. So we're all waiting to see how the, the current party um drivers we take such decision and, and look at it. a lot of people have expected that our neck we bring about implosion within the party but i saw the maturity in which every side you know handle it for us to have what we had so mm. okay okay interesting that uh you if thought yeah you today called yourself... we're having a challenge yeah, yeah, it's interesting you called yourself a baby politician, <laughs> but you were governorship candidate of your party, and you have a group called Lagos for Lagos, which is a quite a, uh, has a grassroots group, and you're calling yourself a baby politician. I think you're trying to be modest right there. But um, um, is the PDP on a sliding fast on the road to disintegration, as some have said? You know, you, you see, it's too early for anybody to speak, just like I keep saying, the atmospheric condition of the country politically is still cloudy. I mean, for the next, the next political dispensation, which is 2027, uh, just like we say in politics, one week is, is more than 10 years in politics, things can change. And before you know it, I mean, you will see, so it's too early for 
anybody to be speaking doom of a political party. Of course, yes, I agree with you that the optics is very bad how they're about our party. But um, trust me, by the time the branding will come, with some of the decisions the party will take, uh, it will take everybody by, by surprise. So, so it, for me, it's too early for us to, yes, there are challenges. Of course, the party that has been out of power for the past um, um, eight years, you know, and it, it, it's a whole lot for them to, to, to grapple. So, but I think it's too early for us to, but, but, to but, but, for, for but, some of us, we're actually waiting yes. for the outcome but, but you're losing of all these key members. Yeah, you're losing some key members of your party. Um, and uh, let me tell you, yes. let me tell you this in politics. You see, as some people are going, as some people are waiting to say, okay, maybe we should come in. In some states, you may also realize that some people want to actually come in, but they don't want to come in because of a particular person. In some states, some people want to be there, so I can't be there because of that person. No, politics is, is so dynamic. But yes, I'm not saying what is going on in our party now is something that is, I mean, the, I mean, the optics is bad, like I said. Mm. But I'm saying it is pretty too early to say this, to say that. Look, let me tell you, pre-2023, the party, the entire party, was in the hands of a particular person. But it doesn't make him anything at the end of the day. So if you want to grab, you want to fight, you don't even know what tomorrow will bring. You can't, if it's not written that you're going to be anything, you can't be. So that's what I'm saying. Yes, people are jostling for what it is. Now. They don't even know who is going to benefit it at the end of the day. We should all calm down okay. and, and, and see. So it's not all doom for our party. Okay. Yes, uh, we know the optics is a bad, but we, 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 it's a work in progress and um, things will change. Gabriel Susuan, former governor of Benue State, who wants to be chairman of your party, uh, has said that uh, he's alleging that there are moles and betrayers who are planted in the party to kill the People's Democratic Party. This is not the first time he's take talking along these lines. Uh, do you agree with this line of thinking? Well, I mean, whether or not you want to agree, just like I said, there, there are things that are happening that is pointing to that fact. But again, um, we can't just go to town to say, oh, we have, a, we have a fact. Like I said, things are happening that is actually pointing to that direction. But until we look at it very well and begin to say, okay, this is it, and all that. Uh, nobody can really see now. But, I mean, it's, the optics are bad, we know. But like I said, everybody is a working project. There is a lot even happening in APC, but because they are still enjoying this point of office, that's why we don't see it. The national chairman is still struggling to retain a seat as national chairman. And... So every political neighbor party has their own. Every political party, as we speak, especially the three major ones now, are still grappling with one thing or the other. So it's not just about PDP, but as it's just the way it is because we have one party to be reckoned with. That's, that's it. We have other parties, they have their own issues, and nobody is talking about them. Why? It's because they are not as big as PDP. So PDP is... Problem. We worry anybody, especially Nigerians who are looking for uh, a change, a, a better change in, in, in governance. So I can understand why we have all of this. But like I said, we need to take our time. We have a constitution. And there is no how if you have gone on the wrong side of that constitution, it will be difficult for anybody to do otherwise or not to invoke, you know, I mean, the, the, the terms of this constitution on whatever it is that you have done. But if that is not done, then whoever want to take a decision based on whatever, they can do it. But like All I right. said, it is too early for us to now begin to say, oh, it is this. It's not doom. It's not all doom a for Anyway, us. you say it's uh, not doom, but um, yes, indeed, it may not be doom, but uh, it also, you may be, uh, become a zombie of a party, which is you are, you are a living, walking, breathing corpse. You're moving around as a party, but nothing is really happening because uh, your party has been... Caged. But, but I will come back to you. We'll come back to you after this break. We want to go on the commercial. Um, and uh, of course, we'll get back to Jando Abdullah Caesar Dino, the governorship candidate of the PDP in the last election. Still politics. HQ, stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, Abdulaziz Olajide Adediro, AC Lagos State, governorship candidate of the PDP, that's the People's Democratic Party, uh, in the 2023 elections. Uh, or was uh, the candidate of the party in the 20 elections. He joins us uh, 
as we continue our conversation with him, of course, looking at the um, situation in the People's Democratic Party. Um, you keep saying, uh, Jando, that the situation is not a lost cause, um, that there is no cause for alarm, the PDP will come back. Um, but some will argue that the PDP um, has a wound. And if that wound is not addressed, if that wound is not healed, if that wound is not attended to, that wound may end up killing the party, maiming the party, making the party incapacitated. I, I, I lost. All right. Can you hear me, sir? Okay, we seem to have a, a bit of a connection a challenge with our guests. But um, if you can hear me, um, some will argue, some will say, to your point that the People's Democratic Party uh, is still strong, it's still alive, there's no cause for alarm, you know, it's not the end of the road, that the party has a wound right now that needs to be attended to, that needs to be healed. And if that wound is not attended to, it may end up eating up and consuming the party. What do you say to that? Of course. Of course, just like I said to you, our last neck has actually proffered solutions to some of this by setting up uh, a disciplinary committee, for instance, the one that is headed by the former governor of Akwaibom State, uh, the Kinudo Manuel, and also set up a reconciliation committee headed by the former governor of Kwara and the former president of the Senate, Dr. Bokola Saraki. These are things that were not there before. And you will now see that everyone who has one thing or the other against anybody then present before this committee for the party to take necessary action according to the tenets of the constitution. So there are processes. PDP is not a, a, a party of an individual that will just sit and dish out you know, orders and all of that. There are processes, there are constitutions, there are guidelines that is guiding activities of this party. So I, I, for me, I think that the moment we go before this committee and they're not able to do the needful or to invoke the, the provision of the constitution on whoever has done um, otherwise, you know, then you can reconsider your stance. You say you now have a reason to wanting to stay or wanting to do anything else. And like I keep saying, uh, the, the political space is still very cloudy. 2027, it's above three years to this time. And like we say, in one week in politics is, is enough time for a decision to be taken and taken over and over again. So for me, I'll go back to where I was coming from. To say, of course, every state has its own issue. I've got my own issue in my state. And our stand is very clear, just like every other person. But it's not something that we can, we have to be calm and put your case forward very well and leave the party to take a decision. But now, like I keep saying, it's too early for us to, somebody took over the party pre-2023. What happened thereafter? The same people were appointed, the same people you supported. So if you want to go and grab it now, who says it's going to be useful to you? That's some of the things that we are speaking to. Can we just calm down and, and, and see how we can make this, right. this family work? All right. Uh, Mr. Dino, must acting national chairman Umar Damagum, must he step aside in order for the PDP to survive? Of course, um, the, the acting chairman is there in acting capacity. Is aware, he's not, he's not, even if you step aside, he's not going anywhere, he's a member of NWC. So that is what the party has said. By the time we come for the neck in August, then the, the central brings in a substantive chairman, and the, the, the acting chairman will revert back to his position as the, the, the deputy chairman for the northern region. But, 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 but a, a, no, a widely, held, really view, a widely held view is that Damagum wants to become the substantive national chairman. So just like you said, so who, is, who, who, who are the people looking into the future to say this is what's going to happen? The previous neck was very clear to say, okay, there is, there is, now we can speak of a vacuum which has to be filled by somebody from that region that produced the chairman. The concern was very clear about it. I've never heard Magu, I mean, uh, what's his name, say, the Magu saying he wants to remain. I've never seen that anywhere. I've never heard that anywhere. Oh. 
So it's, it's just a matter of little time. We have a substantive chairman who is going to come from the region where are you uh, came from. So okay. there is no, no big deal about this whole thing. Okay. So this is a decision taken by NEC to say, okay, we now have a vacuum. Before right. our previous NEC, we do not have a vacuum. And if you have a vacuum, then the region will have to come together and produce a candidate that's going to fill that vacuum. Mm. What are your thoughts? Yes, you said politics is local. So let's go local to Emo State. What are your thoughts on the Emo State PDP situation, where it seems, of course, long-standing members of the party? Um, what they are saying, if you look at the statements, the resignation statements of the ones who put out statements, um, the message that they seem to be harping home is that they no longer feel at home in the party of which they've been members of for many years. What are your thoughts on what's happening in Imo State? Okay, so that is speaking of today, right? Nobody is going to take their right to belong to whatever association to them. I'm not saying they are wrong. I'm not saying they're right. But I'm saying that if the party was able to put his ass together tomorrow, the same people can still rejoin the party to say, okay, now we have conviction that we can come back to the party. I am just saying that, look, I don't have anything against whatever decision they've taken. Like I said, politics is local. In my own state, I have our own issues, and we, we also have our own conditions as well. And um, if, but, but we need to hold on and see what is going to be the end of all of this. I mean, in just a few months, we'll get there. Not that the election is tomorrow or is next tomorrow. It's still three, four years to this time. So, the, yes, they, of course, politics is local. They might have their own reasons for them to say, look, we're not going to do this. Oh. But again, uh, I mean, they can still, the same people can still come back and rejoin PDP tomorrow. It, well, what, what do you think? We're able to put our yeah. ass together. Yeah, for people who don't feel at home, for instance, Emeka Herioha, who is, seems to be the only governor who was able to fight the ruling All Progressives Congress to a standstill, he won an election, uh, was declared winner by INEC on the platform of the PDP only lost out at the Supreme Court to the APC, where Hopo Zodima was declared the winner by the court. Some people from Imo State are saying the last election, um, the party didn't do well. It performed abysmally. And uh, they are pointing to the issues in the party. Of course, Senator Samayawa was the uh, candidate of the PDP. Um, what some of them say is they point out that Samayawa is a national secretary of the People's Democratic Party. And they feel that the party should not have allowed him to um, stand as governorship candidate. So there seems to be a consistent lack of adherence to the constitution of the PDP repeatedly, where a, a serving national chairman, a secretary of the party, who will be the one to sign um, uh, for the party primaries, who will be part of those who will select those who super supersede or superintend over the party primaries, who will be the one to write to INEC, informing them of the party. He is also governorship candidate. Now, if you look at the PDP's constitution, repeatedly we're seeing, you know, that constitution and the principles the PDP is known for not being adhered to. All right. So, um, what do you say to what's going on in Emo State, connecting that with what's happening at the national level, where these members okay, um, don't feel at home? Uh, H. E. Mika Ayodia is somebody that um, I, I respect so much. It, it's, it's a political gladiator that. Nobody wants to lose to another party, undoubtedly. And just like I said, um, what happened in Imo within taking that decision, I'm sure it's, it's a matter of today. If, if things change tomorrow, I'm sure you would consider his stance. Uh, having said that, and speaking about the last election in Imo State, of course, I'm not from Imo State, but everybody knew that there was no election in Imo State. We saw it, it was very obvious. So you can't put the blame on whether somebody did this or somebody did that. We saw what happened actually, where results were written everywhere and it, it, it's so obvious. So you can't judge anybody's performance or to say this is what happened. We saw what happened at the general election, um, just, just like just like Ogi State as, as well. Uh, so I'm not going to sh put blame to say it's because of this, it's because of that. And all that. So at the concern of the party is so clear. And this issue of national secretary or non-national secretary is in court already. And um, 
I don't think we need to dispose it. Everybody, both sides have been in court. I'm sure courts will interpret the constitution well for, for all of us, and we're going to move forward. Uh, like I keep saying, all these issues, before you say Jack Robinson can be resolved with just one pronouncement, and before you know it, the party is rebranded and we look forward. I'm not going to say the optics is not bad for the party as we speak. All but right. the most All important right. thing is to see how many of us, we have governors who are doing right. very well in this, in this state, who are of the PDP. I'm sure they are not going to sleep and let the party just go into extinction because that's the platform upon which uh, they, right. they go to power. So I believe them, I trust the majority of them, experienced politicians, and are doing well in, the, in their states. Right. But I believe at some point, they are going to come to the rescue of the party. I mean, uh, everybody can just... Abdullah, like, it's just yeah, a yeah. matter of the time is going to be. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time. We wish we had more time with you. Um, but we, we'll have you again on Politics HQ. We know that you'll join us. You'll oblige us at that point in time. We talk about legal state uh, PDP matters. Uh, Abdul Aziz uh, Olajan Adero is the, uh, uh, was the governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the last general election. Thank you for your time. We'll take a break. When we come back, Thank we'll you. continue our conversations right here on Politics HQ. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, it's not all gloomy, it's not all doom, it's not all agony for the People's Democratic Party. As uh, you may already know, the party, which is in power in Oyo State, has cleared all the chairmanship seats across the 33 local government areas of the state. Well, the organizer of that election, the Oyo State Independent Electoral Commission, uh, announced the results of the council poll held on Saturday, April 27. Let's look at those results. Well, you can see the different local government areas there, mostly between the PDP uh, and the APC, the All Progressives Congress, while the All Progressives Congress uh, is the ruling party at the center there in the opposition um, in Oyo State. Well, of course, the PDP is in power in Oyo State, where Governor Weshe Makinde is governor of that state. All right. Well, um, <laughs> however, the All Progressives Congress in the state is not taking this line down. Um, they um, are demanding the cancellation of a local government election, uh, which produced the results you're seeing on your screen. Um, we can see uh, Ido local government area, for instance, the APC had 3,059, uh, PDP had 20,059, uh, IREPO, uh, APC had 2,638, PDP had 17,447. You have uh, Ishe local government, where the APC polled 8,241, PDP 69,000. 896, uh, so on and so forth. The APC in Oyo State are not happy with these results. They are calling for the outright cancellation of the results. Uh, the party is claiming that this election or election was a sham, and they're saying that if the results are allowed to start or to stand, uh, the results in that election will damage the reputation of Oyo State. Of course, uh, this was contained in a statement issued on Saturday by the spokesman for the People's or the All Progressives Congress uh, in Oyo State. He goes by the name of Lawale Shadare. Well, joining us to look at this election and their results and to analyze uh, what's been happening in that state, we have Honorable Dare Adeleke. He is a special advisor to the governor of Oyo State on federal constituency matters. And later, we hope to have Honorable Mojido Laoya, who is the APC uh, senatorial chairman in Oyo South. Um, Honorable Dari Adeleke, good evening to you. Thank you so very kindly for your time. Well, good evening. Thanks for having me on your program. Yes. And um, what is your reaction, by extension, even the reaction of the Oyo State government to uh, the claim by the All Progressives Congress in your state that the election that produced those results we saw on our screen was a sham? <laughs> It's quite unfortunate. So what do you expect from the from the opposition? As you are aware that uh, APC is an opposition party in our state. And if you recall, even during the governorship election, they were beating not only really silly, but blue and red. And the uh, our state is a PDP state, right from the session of 1999. You look at it from the statistically, we will agree with me that everything is always on ground. There was an election 
And as you, you recall that all, not only APC contested that election, other parties as well were involved in the election. We haven't had them crying, uh, wow, wow, wow. It's only the APC. But we expected them to do that anyway, because the preparation was 2027. And then we see another tsunami from 2027. But this job is from an iPad. They asked for it and they got it right. PDP is that a brand. We really, it was a all right, we'll take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll continue with our conversation. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Uh, we are still continuing our conversation on the elections in Oyo State, where the People's Democratic Party, which is the ruling party in Oyo State, cleared all 33 local governor areas. Um, special advisor to the governor of Oyo State on federal constituency matters, Honorable Adeleke, Daria Adeleke, is our guest on the program today. But let's look at those results one more time. Uh, we can see that uh, uh, in a Fiji local government area, 18,662 votes went to the PDP. Uh, 1,108 votes went to the All Progressives Congress. They go to Akinye, the local government area, uh, where 3,477 votes went to the APC and 66,325 votes went to the PDP. Now, this is a crux. It's a classic example of the problem that uh, the APC seems to be having with those elections. Similar results um, in most of the local government areas. For instance, in Ibadan Southwest local government area, you can see on the right of your screen there, APC had 5,978 votes, the PDP 25,702. Um, we have, um, for instance, in Ibarapa, central local government area, uh, the APC getting 6,567 uh, votes, the PDP 25,000. 336. We look at it, but on Northwest local government area, APC 3,848, the PDP 21,810. Now, what is the All Progressives Congress saying in, in Oyo State? They're simply saying um, that only 20% of eligible voters in Oyo State cast their votes in that election. And they are claiming that 80% um, of the voters in Oyo State were disenfranchised in that election. That is the claim that of the peoples of the All Progressives Congress. Wale Shadare is the um, APC spokesperson in Oyo State, and he's been putting out statements during the election, before the votes are counted, and after that election, he thinks that the OISEC, the Oyo State uh, Independent Electoral Commission, uh, did a hatchet job with that um, election. And they're asking, how can we have a sweeping victory for the PDP all over the state? How can only 20% of eligible voters cast their vote. And so he is um, alleging that majority of voters in Oyo State were disenfranchised um, with irregularities, complaints of um, uh, uh, malpractices, complaints of violence, intimidation, and also um, the performance of OISEC with the beavers and all that um, uh, you know, being deployed, or let me say rather a controversy regarding that. Um, he said about 80% of those eligible voters were, in his words, deliberately disenfranchised, and they came up with, uh, he's accusing the OISEC of coming up with fictitious figures as votes uh, recorded. Now, of course, um, the arguments for and against this are there. Um, traditionally, it, it is known that um, uh, voters do not always turn up for local government elections because they feel that local government elections really are not free and fair. In fact, the overwhelming view is that um, Local government elections in Nigeria are known to always go in favor of the ruling party in the state. Um, you might say rigged in favor of the ruling party in states across the country. In fact, in some states, the opposition parties do not even bother enlisting for local government elections because they feel they have no chance in those elections, with the exception of a few states like Kaduna State, when Nasser Arufai uh, was governor of Kaduna State. Um, of course, Nasser Arufai uh, brought what we call electronic voting um, to the local government elections in Oyo State. And it was during the time of Nasser Arufai as governor of, of, sorry, not Oyo State, Kaduna State. It was during the time of Nasser Arufai um, that you had opposition parties winning the PDP, winning elections in Kaduna State at will. Um, and it was clear that you had democracy at that level. The argument is being made by some 
observers that, you know what, we need to hand over local government elections to INEC at least, so that um, all parties in the state can have a better chance uh, at winning those elections. Well, we hope to have further conversations on the developments regarding the local government elections in Oyo State. But for now, that's the size of a package. Thanks for being company tonight. My name is Kofi Bartels. All through this week, we we'll have conversations on the latest and hottest topics in the politics of Nigeria. Good night.